you created a, if you have if you have uh, any issues uh, while creating the personal developer instance and what version you have uh, created can somebody confirm gayatri did you create a personal developer instance harshita you Yeah, yes, but I didn't say which version it is. I okay, just okay. tried it. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Like I, mm -hmm. it must be. I think uh, Janadu Janadu is the latest version. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we can start the session today. Uh, thanks for joining guys. Uh, okay. Let me share my screen to you. I hope uh, is everybody able to see my screen. Okay. Okay, so once you created a developer uh, as a instance, so this uh, yesterday I already explained about the interface uh, which you have. So this is the banner frame here and here you can see the company logo and uh, we have the uh, menu options, the all favorite history and workspaces you have and I have explained all, all about this. And uh, so if you want to know the version name, which you normally you can see the version name here. But in real time scenarios, in the when you are working for organizations, normally we don't log in like this. Directly we give the URL of the, your company. Directly you can uh, go and check. Uh, directly you will be logged into your personal develop uh, your company instance. Okay. So in that time, if you want to check the which version your company is using, so then what we do, sir, just go to the all, go to the filter navigation here. Just type S T A. TS dot do. So if you click on enter, it will open the, the information about your personal uh, that company instance. Okay. Here you can see this is our personal level pay. Here you can see the URL of the your uh, instance and here you can see the build name. What is the build name? Janadu. This is the latest version I'm using and here you can see the build date and build tag ID and here you can see the uh, instant is online, instant ID, everything, but we don't require. But if you want to know when you are working in an organization, so you should know which version you are using and uh, what is the current patch, everything you should know. Okay. This is the latest build tag is latest one patch one. This is the date. Okay. And this is the back end about the details uh, of the your instance. Okay. Okay. This is the just one for reference. So I'm saying this. Okay. So if you want to customize your company logo, so then what you do, just go and uh, click on the basic configuration UI 16. Just wait, it is loading. Yeah. So here you can see the banner image for the UI 16. So if you want to change your company logo here, you can the change the, the date format. And uh, if you want to change the date format, if you want to change the banner image here and the date format, it is a 24 hours. If you want to know, change the 12 hours, you can see and head background color, head band color. Now it is a black color. If you want to change to something else, you can change it. and banner text color white color if you want this banner text color favorites and all if you want to change it to something else you can change it normally in real time organization we don't do any of this kind of but in rare cases sometimes if you get to ch choose to select uh, to to change the value you can change it okay normally we don't do anything this kind of operation when you are working real time organization okay 
page the header option if you want to if you click on the if you put the uh, mouse uh, over the service now right here you can see the service now service management here you can see the, if you want to change to that logo service now training i'm just for so here you can see uh, you can change this so if you want to change the banner image so just i'm just uh, giving images taking images for the ibm now so if you want to change it to ibm logo it's blue color yeah. save image Okay, now the, you can see the this logo will be coming here. Okay, I'm just clicking on the save. So once you are there, save, details are saved. So if you want to up, apply the change, just refresh the screen, reload the page. So these are the basic some cosmetic changes to your uh, interface changes to your uh, instance. But in real time scenarios, so uh, we don't get this opportunity to change this and all. Okay. Okay. Even in my uh, career, I never get a chance to change this company logo and all because it was already implemented by the when, when while starting the your uh, taking a subscription from the service. No, by default, we all these settings will be needed in the initial phase. Okay. As a developers, we get very less opportunity to involve in the this kind of uh, changes interface changes. Okay. So once you click on this, it will take to you to the home page. Okay. So next thing today, our topic is the initial topic for every tool, for every technology, the, uh, if, you, if you build an application, uh, you are going to publish it to your company users. So your company users, how they are going to access, they must have the access to your company application. So for every tool, the base first initial setup is the user administration. So, okay, for every technology, every tool, first thing we set up a user. So, first we give access to users. So, to give access to user, we must create their records in our service now system. So, for our service now database, we must create them in the service now. So, I am going to explain about the user, use how to create the users, then groups, how to create the groups and roles. So these three topics coming under the user's administration. Okay, now as an administrator, I can give, I can create the new users and I can update the existing users. Okay, now let's see, let me take to the users table. So if you click on the users, if you type on the, if you type the user, you can see user administration under users you have. Okay, just click on this users. So you, here you can find the all the users which are created and they can access the our service no instance. So service no, by default you can see six twenty seven records are already created. So if you if you get a uh, requirement to create the new user ID, okay, just to, you can click on the new. So it will open a form request form to create the user. So user ID, ID must be the unique, like our Gmail ID, our Gmail ID must be unique, right? So like a username, it, it, you can consider it as a username or user ID, anything. User ID must be unique to the entire user table. So I'm just giving the service now. Snow Posity. So Snow Posity October, okay? I'm just giving this is October name. 
okay first name is the snow you can it could be the first name of the user last name is the oct i'm just giving the test record so if you want to create a by your with your name you can create the user id and first name and last name okay the title title of the that person you can select like a, if he is a director it is technician junior developer anything you can select okay and the department if he is uh, belongs to it or some uh, any department finance hr dev development so you can select them anything whatever okay and here you can see the password resets now you are creating a record for someone and you are setting the password everything uh, okay but you should not remember their password so what you do so once they are logged in after first login they have to reset their password okay that then only the person only who knows the password okay now you have to select this first uh, while creating a record okay and logged out means when sometimes user giving the number of attempts to log in into the service now. So with the wrong password, that time the account will be logged out. Okay. And active, if user is active or inactive, you can check this record. Okay. And this web services access only means if you want to use this record for the integration purpose, not a end user purpose, only integration purpose. Integration means to create the web services only for the integration. Then those we call it as a service accounts. Okay. I will cover when we are going to discuss about the integration topics. Okay. Now internal integration also same. Okay. Here email ID, we have to provide the email ID of the user. I'm just giving my personal email ID just for reference purpose only. Okay and the language and uh, which language he belongs to outlook whether he is using outlook or something else hotmail or anything okay and time zone so you can select that person time zone here whether it is uh, any based on his country we have to select the time zone here okay and date format and business phone and mobile phone everything these are the basic details to know to create a, a uh, any user okay i'm just clicking on the once you are done the entering the details just go to the header, this, this area, just right click, click on the save. So now the user record is created, okay? So next our task is, we need to set his password, okay? Next our task is, we need to say, so here you can see the button, set password, create, click on the set password, okay? Here you can click on the generate password, so now the password is generated and you have to copy the password. Okay, you need to take it to some notepad. So we need to take it to some save to some password. Then say click on the save password. The password will be saved. Once the password is successfully saved, you can click on the close button. Okay. Now the user record is created with the temporary password. So now you provide these details to your, that the person who has access, uh, asked for the uh, login, new, new user account. So what you do, you just provide the username. Username is this, no October and the password is. Okay. The, these are the details you have to provide to your the requester, whoever provided that. So what what then what we want what they do? So right. so then what they do? So they they will try to log in into the they in their system. So I'm just using another browser to log in into this. Login dot do. Okay, click on this. So it will take to the. So now it is asking for the username and password. So, so we have to use this username. And then password. So the password is accepted and it is asking to change the new password. So current password, again, you have to provide. Then we have to create new password with this all, all requirements, minimum eight characters, maximum 100 characters, at least one layer case, upper case, digit. So just you have to follow the new password with the same characters. So I'm just giving some random password. Okay, then. 
So once we given the new password. So now you are able to log in and you have changed your password. So now you can see the the person name. So it is a once you first log in, it will uh, it will take to you some tour guide. So how it will work, everything it is. I uh, see you can see the how the favorites are working, how the all it, it is showing the in the guided tour. Okay. So now you can see the the uh, the username who has logged in. He's a junior developer service now like this. You can see all the details here. So this is how we can create the new login. So if you click on the all, he can't see the all the applications. Why? Because he we did not provide any access to him. He just we created a role. Uh, we created just one user, new user. So he can't access all the applications here. But as an admin, you can see we can access the all the applications. You can access the as administrator. This is the normal user, normal self-service user. He can submit the request, but he can't create, he can't update the existing, he can't do the administration activities. So now our next topic is now we have created the users. So next topic is the groups. So groups, why we use the groups? Normally we use groups to combine the users for the common purpose, okay, to provide common access to assign the uh, tasks to the group of the people, like our service node developer team is there. So they assign, we assign them a developer task, okay? So and the service node support team. So they work on the incidents. Support, uh, they, they work on the support activities, okay? they work on the incidents and uh, tasks okay so as a developer we work on the stories so for the common purpose uh, to to combine the to create uh, to combine the users into the common purpose to use them we create the groups so we can assign the task to group so whoever is available on that group they will able to uh, they will assign the ticket to themselves and they will start work on that one so for the common to combine the users you can see this and if you want to know the exact uh, definition of the service now then what we do just go to the google so to know the exact definition you want to then just do service So you can see in the service now, group is a collection of the users with the shared purpose. So for the co common purpose, we group up, we create the group of the people. Okay, groups can perform tasks such as approving change requests, resolving incidents, receiving email notification, perform work order tasks. Okay, for the common purpose, we use the groups. So, okay, now I will tell you how to create the groups. Okay, just go to user administration again now. Here I have covered the users, right? So now I will go to the groups. So these are the existing 51 groups are already created. So now you can uh, create one new group or you can, uh, if you want to know the existing groups, so a cab approval is there, okay? Otherwise change management group is there. Just I'm opening the change management. So here you can see the group member. Only now only one man, one member is there, but uh, like this we can add and remove the extra uh, multiple members to the group, okay? So now I'm going to create the new group. Okay. So service now support team. Okay. I'm just creating a new group and here you can see the manager. So every group have, must have a manager depends upon the company, some groups somewhere. So if you are, uh, uh, if somebody is not uh, performing up to the up to date, so uh, the tickets are pending from long time. So they, what they do, they reach, they reach to this manager. If, if somebody is not responding to the work assigned to this group, they will escalate to the issue to the manager. So for the reporting purpose and support purpose, they use this manager. So you, if you want to select any manager, it will take to you to the, the user's group table only. So you can select any one of them. Okay, and group email ID. It must be a DL distributed list. So group ID. So if you send email to this group ID, everybody will get. Okay, and the parent. So group also have parent and child. So you can, if you want to create child of the somebody group, you can create. You can select the value. Otherwise, you can mention this description. We created this group. Group. Uh, 
to assign incidents of service now so like this we have, you can mention what the purpose of the group why you created yeah once you are done you can click on the submit okay now we created the groups now you can see the the group name which you created service no support group is already created okay now if we want to add the members to this group just go to the group members table here you can click on the edit so once you click on the edit so it will get the interface to add and remove the users. Now we don't have any users. You can add the user. If you want to add the able tutor user, you can add. And if you want to now just one user we created, right? Snow October, you can add it. So like this, you can add the multiple numbers, okay? To the group, just, okay? You can see the, the, the details of the email ID, whatever the user you have selected. So you can see the able tutor, first name, last name and all, okay? Just click on the save. Okay, now the group is also created and I have added the, the members also. So if incident or anything is assigned to this group, these two persons are responsible to the any work assigned to this group. Okay, now this is how we create the groups. Okay, next topic is the roles. Okay, roles are to provide access to the any users we use roles. Okay, so in service now we have the um, base roles like a uh, admin for the he, he is the admin of the system so he can do any anything to the uh, he can do any operation any work in the service now and the next one is the ITIL user. So ITL user, they can only work on the incidents. So like uh, now we are service, now we are admins. So, and let's say uh, some Windows team is there. We, uh, some Windows servers are down. So we create incident for the Windows team and they will fix the issue in the Windows support, uh, Windows OS, okay? So those users, whoever wants to create, uh, uh, resolve the incidents and fulfill the task of the uh, users, we, we give the ITL role to them, okay? And the third one is the self-service role. So, so self-service is the self-service like a, uh, and if you go to any restaurant or self-service means we have to take the uh, the food, whatever they are. Like that in the self-service in service, no? We, have, we can request the whatever the issue or request, you can request self-request, okay? So these kind of basically by default admin user, ITL user and self-service. So these kind of roles uh, we have. Okay, indeed we have may have another roles also, but basically we can categorize these uh, roles into the three categories, admin, ITL role and the self-service. Okay, so roles normally, if you want to assign any role to user, you just go to here, here you can see the roles tab, we can assign the role to him. Now, as of now, he is unable to see, he can see only these applications. So if you want to assign the some ITL role to him, so he may access the other application, some more applications as per his this role. Okay. So click on save. So now by adding the ITL role, so their related roles also will be added to this role, this user, okay? Now you can see almost 40 roles are there, but actually while assigning the ITL role, these other roles are dependent on, on the, this role. So automatically also they will get these roles. If you want to know the how they will get, you can see inherited means, true means these roles are assigned because of the another role that is ITL role. Inherited false means directly we assign this role, but while assigning this role, these other roles are contains this ITL role that automatically these roles also, also will be assigned, okay? Now you can check his access level now, okay? If you refresh his screen, so just click on the all, you can see now only same uh, applications are able to see now. So then what we have to do, Okay, so it is not getting refresh. So what we have to do, so just go and check this. So yesterday I told you that there is a impun set user. So if you want to check, one minute. Okay, so if you want to check uh, 
some other users access how they can see the service now what are the uh, components what are the applications that he can access just so if you want to check without their password and login just what you do just go to impersonate user just you can search his name you can search for ct yeah you can search and just click on the impersonate user So automatically we can check his login now. Okay, now automatically it will take to his login. So you can see the when snow October. Okay, so now you can check his access level. See now he is able to many applications. Why? Because we have assigned a ITL role to him. So that is the reason he is able to see the many applications in the application navigator. Okay, so once you are done your validation, you can go back to like end impersonation again. It will take back to you your previous login that original system administration login it will take okay now so we have assigned a role to him this role but again i am taking back to taking back the role to him okay so i know why uh, i will tell you why i am removing this okay So now today you got an, a requirement to assign the ITL role to he, this uh, Snow October uh, this uh, this user. But tomorrow you may get uh, ten users. You need to add ITL role to ten users. So again, for every user you should not go to edit and you should not type the ITL role and you should not. So this is not a best approach. Then what you do? First we create one group. So you assign the roles, you assign the members to that particular group and you can assign the same role to the group. So automatically the group members will get that particular role. Okay. Now you see the service no support team group I am opening. So this is the group I created and two members are there. Here you can see the roles. Okay, so if you want to assign the any role to this particular group, automatically these group members will also get the same access. Okay, now just click on the roles, click on the edit. Okay, now you can see ITL role, just click on the save. So now just to refresh the screen here. Okay. So now ITL role is assigned and to this service no support group and group members to users. So automatically this no October and the Abel tutor both will get this role. Why? Because they are part of this service no support group. So that is the name. So instead of assigning a role to any you uh, to many users. So what we have, what is the best approach? You should create one new group and we should assign the roles to the group. So automatically the we all get the same and that group members will get the same level access as per the role. Okay. So. Now you can see Snow October uh, profile now. So we'll check how his roles are there. Now you can see all are inherited. Why? Because they is part of the service no support group. So no one is nothing as well. You can see previously ITL role is the false, but now inherit is false. Now it, you can see that true. So check on the group members now. Okay. You can see all the members uh, support uh, members to uh, this uh, role is assigned to them. Okay. Now you have covered the user roles, groups, and roles. You have covered the users, groups, and how to create them. Okay. So in real time scenarios, we don't create uh, groups. Uh, we don't create the users and the groups mostly. So what do you do? So we have a LDAP and LDAP integration. So in every organization, they they have, they might have the one central repository for the uh, users. 
okay in in the company let's say in my company we are using sap service no salesforce rpa many applications are there so in every application we should not create a users directly into the service no separately salesforce separately so they don't do like that so they will create a one central tool to store the users information Okay, in simple language, I'm saying they create one central tool. So they will integrate each tool with the that particular tool. In my company, we are using Darwin. So Darwin, like a and Active Directory. So, so with like a Vokta, Azure. Okay, like this, we have many uh, applications. Though they create the users when you, if you join your any new company, so initially they will create your ID either Darwin or Active as per their company. So whatever the tool they are using, so they will create your ID here first. Okay, and from the from these IDs, we can integrate with the service now. We can integrate with service now. Whatever the tool they want, SAP or uh, Salesforce or anything, any other tools. Uh, they will take the data from the Darwin automatically. They will be imported into the service no uh, users table for rare cases for the special purpose like for integration or uh, like uh, to validate the some functionalities. So we use this. Uh, we create the new users into the system. Okay. Now let me take to the another. In, uh, yeah, user administration. So. So here you can see the this is the latest one since last two versions they have introduced. So now you have assigned a role to directly a group you uh, to a group and automatically the group members are able to get this roles. But if you want to assign the role to for the So time limited user roles. If you want to assign a role to any user at the particular time, like I, I want uh, one hour uh, role to uh, one hour or one day role to any particular person. So you can create the time limited slots. So here you can see, let me open a new record. So role is admin and user is LNA Rabek and the start time is the November 18th and the end time is the November 19th. So for one day, he will be the admin. So after this end time, he will be a, he will lose this admin role from his user profile. Okay. So like this, you can create the time limited user role. This is the one recently they have introduced. Okay. Just click on this. Okay. Now. I'm creating admin role. Okay, I'm just sending this role now from this time to next to tomorrow, this time, okay? So you can mention some comments why we are going to uh, use this, uh, why we are going to assign this uh, further to, to admin activists to do. Okay, like this, you have to mention. So just click on the save. So the admin role is assigned to him from this time to this time. So now we can check whether he is able to previously he can able to access only few applications because of the ITL role. So now you have to check his ID. Okay, now I'm what I'm doing here. Just I will try to refresh this. For the personal role operations, this would be, this is the drawback I observed. So if you assign some role, if you did something, so they, it is not going to be applied. Okay, now we can see this is the, his login ID. See, now he is able to see the all the applications. Okay, because his uh, ID, he we he we assigned a time limited role to that user for the next to, next to twenty four hours. He is the admin. So after this time, he will lose this admin role. Okay, after this tomorrow, after six o'clock, he will lose the admin role. Okay, now you can see this. So very rare cases we use this for in the real time. Okay. See, every time I do, uh, I don't want to go to this filter condition. Just what I do, I'm just going click on the bookmark. Okay, I'm just saving here. So every time I don't need to do this. Okay, yeah, now you can do this. Okay. 
so we have covered the users groups and the time certain and the logged in users logged in users in this module you can see the the persons who are currently logged in so now you can see the snow october and admin this is the admin login and in this browser you can see the snow october the only these two users are currently logged in okay now you can see last access when they have lost access okay total transaction you can see the all the active users uh, who has logged in recently okay next thing is active transactions so admin is active transactions they did now so in real time we don't we never get a uh, uh, chance to look into these issues okay now you can see the departments okay so department if you, while creating a user you must see the departments right if you want to create the new department you can come this department and you can click on the new record okay you can create the name uh, department id primary contact id everything you don't uh, your uh, requirement the uh, the person who has given this requirement they will provide all these details you can mention them okay and uh, so while in a while in the initial setup we do this all these department locations okay they were company location wherever their company is working uh, uh, company is uh, uh, working so you can see the all the locations here and if you get it normally these locations also we import from the this uh, darwin active directory or worked anything so normally we don't create but if you get a uh, requirement to create the locations you can come here you can see whether location is created or not you can go to the new you can create all the details you can enter the all the details okay you can submit the request okay next one is the companies so these are the companies are uh, uh, you are supporting and uh, you in your company you may have the child companies like my company is a saffron so in my saffron company we have many child companies so we can mention all the companies based on the location everything you can create them if you get if you want to create the new one you can go to the new one so you can fill the all the details name phone number everything so these provided these uh, details will be provided by your company only okay so location map uh, you can see that um, some location uh, ip addresses uh, latitude longitude details here so wherever is company is located you can see the, all the details here okay so and uh, you can in, in this if, if you go to the user roles uh, table here you can see the you, whatever the person how many roles he has you can see the all the report for the reporting purpose you can use this okay so now see uh, as a admin admin user you can see these are the admin role persons have so how many uh, users have the admin role you can see the all the persons now okay like this for the reporting purpose how many users so you can go to the itl role how many users have the itl role you can see the person or itl they have the 54 persons these all users have the itl role for the reporting purpose you can come and you can check the roles here and the group roles so each group how many roles they have okay admin group uh, only one group have the admin role service no training group has the only admin role so like this you can see the groups how many roles they have okay okay like this you can see the for the reporting purpose okay and uh, yeah so these are the all near main topics in the user administration so here we discussed about the how to create the roles and how to create the users and groups how to assign the users to the groups and how to create the roles the purpose of the roles you can see the the purpose of the roles here in the definition so you do need to uh, any uh, go through any material material here if you go to the uh, documentation service no documentation you can get the you can see roles control access to the features and capabilities in the applications and module the admin role provides so roles what they if you want to provide access to any uh, if, if you are a manager you must have the manager role like that if you want to get higher access you must have the roles here okay so if you go to the base system roles here you can see that some documentation here 
So try to adapt the service no documentation because we don't need to pre uh, go through the many PDFs we have, uh, but you don't need to go through this. So every day, if you have any doubt, anything, you just come here in the service no document inside. You will get the good definitions. So and in the easy uh, language, you can see the all the details here. Okay. Base system roles. You can see the administration is the base system role and it contains many roles here. You can see our, uh, okay. And, uh, Agent admin, these are the separate applications. So you can see them. All these are IP application client. So we'll discuss them in the in detail. Okay, now I will explain about the ITL role. Okay, you can check click on the ITL role. Okay, you can see the ITL information technology infrastructure library users. They can open, update, close incident problems, changes, and the configuration items. This role is the base system role, technician role. Users with ITL role can have the tasks to assign to this all. Level. So basically ITL roles, they, they do work on the support activities. Okay, okay, they can work on this. So for ITL, you, you can't assign the multiple people to the ICL. So before assigning any of these system roles to your colleagues, uh, the person who has that, you should take a approval because it, it comes under the license issue. So if you assign the roles to uh, many people, service no will more, charge more as per the your assignment, uh, as per the ITL roles you have assigned to them, okay? So just go through this document, just to, we don't need to, uh, go through this all the roles here just to go through the admin and the ITL admin roles. So what is the difference between ITL and ITL and ITL admin? We have ITL administration role. Yeah, they what they that the main difference is this ITL admin role, they can create, update the records, but ITL admin role, you can see ITL administration can delete incidents, problems, and only the difference is the they can delete the records. But ITL user, they can't delete the record. So that is the main difference now. So other roles I will explain when the related topic uh, we are going to discuss, okay? So yeah, as of now, we just covered the that main topics in the user administration. So what you do, you just, uh, in, uh, if you created a personal level for instance, you just go to and create uh, some new users and create some groups and assign the group, uh, assign the roles to groups assign the users to groups and assign the same roles to group. You can check the, the, the roles are automatically assigned to your users or not. You can check them, okay? Just try to use the impersonate user. So instead of logging into the username and password, just go and check the impersonate user, okay? This is the uh, just introduction about the user administration in the service, no? So tomorrow we are going to discuss about the table creation and the form administration with the advanced topics, okay? So any doubt guys today, no? So do you have any doubts? Uh, since this is the first class, right? You can ask some questions about the course content and anything. If you want to know, uh, if you want to ask anything, you can ask me, okay? Okay, otherwise we can meet the same time tomorrow. Okay, if you don't have any questions and if you, meantime, if you get some time, some questions tomorrow morning, uh, you can post your questions in the, uh, our group. So, you can, I will try to answer as early as possible. Okay. Okay, then I can, the, if you don't have any questions, I can, we can close this session today and we'll meet tomorrow again. Thanks for joining. Okay. Please uh, create the personal opinions and please try to practice the, whatever the topics uh, that user administration uh, activities I did. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.